So what do we have this week? Uh, Hasselblad's making a huge price drop on their medium format cameras. Uh, I'm surprised Polaroid hasn't gotten sued yet. And a photographer has her identity stolen and gets revenge. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Aperture Chat. Uh, I'm Tom. And I'm Ryan. And I had some fun looking at news this week. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, his first story, which, which is the last story from the way I'm supposed to do it, and I never do. In 2011, there was a photographer out in San Francisco. And I'm going to butcher her name, which is why we have the notes in front of us. Jessamine, yeah, Jessamine Lovell. Um, she was at a gallery out in San Francisco, uh, the, the San Francisco Camera Work Gallery, and had her wallet stolen. Okay. Think, okay, you get your wallet stolen, you call, you cancel all the credit cards, you go through the usual identity theft practices. Yeah, not her. What she decided to do was, being the great photographer that she is, she hired a private investigator to track down the woman who stole her wallet and was using her credit cards and everything. And they followed her around San Francisco for like three months, <clears throat> taking pictures of her, using the card, basically doing all the PI stuff. All the, and then she used that to open up a new event <laughs> at the gallery. And then personally sent an invitation to the woman who stole her identity to invite her back to the gallery to see it. That's pretty funny. That is pretty epic. I was like, that that was just cool. I love where your head is. If for a weird art project, that is how you do that. Like, your life is to the point where you needed someone to steal your wallet for that next exhibit. <laughs> just imagine, she probably broke off all of that <clears throat> as business expenses because... Everything's already business expenses. <laughs> if you're photographing somebody taking pictures of having stolen your wallet... Everything else you do is already a business expense. <laughs> no, it's this. But yeah, the fact they followed her. You could her. just do something else, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I thought that was a great story it's, when I came across it's it. It's very funny. Uh, I wanted to lead off with that one because it's a little funny and it really shows what happens when you pick on a photographer. They can turn around and screw with you pretty badly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's screwing with you. Like, not arresting you. Oh no, she still got arrested. I realize, but you still got to go around and spend money. Oh for yeah, months for for a couple. You months. could just have not done that. Yeah, all right. Hasselblad offers a massive price drop on the H five D forty. It's almost half off. Yeah, H five D forty, the forty megapixel camera body from Hasselblad, is down to a slim ten thousand dollars. Even more specifically, nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars from eighteen thousand five hundred. I kind of want one. Oh, who doesn't? Well, at the, the see the forty one is the one that's far too close to a thirty five millimeter film frame in megapixels. I mean, the, the, the performance is huge, different, but yeah. If you're going to go down that way, you may as well spend all of your money that you'll ever make. So, um, so the other, the other discounts, the fifty is HD fifty megapixel one is five four thousand dollars off, only twenty three thousand five hundred dollars. HD fifty kit with eighty millimeter. 2.8 HCAF uh, is what only twenty six thousand dollars down yeah. from thirty two thousand dollars. Yeah, so that they've made huge they're, price drops, they're thousands both, of dollars of price drops, and they're still they're both on my Christmas wish list. Oh yeah, oh they've always been. That's always a good job. I mean, I'll take a D eight hundred. I don't even need an eight ten. The eight hundred is a fine eight hundred D. Eh, the amount I care about <laughs> that is very little. <laughs> really. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So there's, if you're in the market for Hasselblad, now's the time to buy. Yeah. I'm and, sure and this it, makes a huge difference for you. You could buy me one. I, I'd take it. Yeah, we could we could review one of those pretty damn well. We could. We could. I could rent one. <clears throat> I could rent one, too. I mean, like, no, you have to add, like, a whole extra layer of paperwork. Yeah. Carl lends us to do that. And I, I took the time to put all the paperwork in. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, Yeah. So, Polaroid 
how have they not gotten sued yet? This is what I want to know. I don't know. I mean, the Instagram logo, as we're going to talk about. Yeah. Their, their, their new camera looks like the Instagram logo. Yep. The Socialmatic. Socialmatic. So why does it have a rear-facing camera? I don't know. So it's, it's a square camera, which looks exactly like the Instagram uh, logo yeah. that you see on your app, but it's a physical camera you can point at people, Yep. which then has a rear-facing camera. I don't know because, so, because it would make sense like if the rear facing the camera and then have my face somewhere in that picture. Well, the front facing is a 14 megapixel camera. Well, yeah. The rear facing is a 2 megapixel camera. Well, it's so you can have picture in picture of your own face. Why? But that's the loneliest picture ever. <laughs> it's a picture of your friends with a tiny picture of your face in it. Can you move it to like? I'm sure like you whole, can do that. I mean, well, it runs no Android. other reason for it, it. It runs Android. Yeah, it runs full blown Android. So somebody probably made an app or made, made a, an app. Three hundred dollars. Yeah, oh, you didn't get down to that. Three hundred dollars. It, but it prints too. You can buy a two hundred dollar printer and a hundred dollar phone, and it does the same thing. But this it is the same price. <laughs> but but it you prints. can take the donkey or the train. It, it prints right. Th- you can you can take. You can buy the Polaroid printer like Jared Poland was talking about with the 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 um well the Fuji Instax. Yeah, the, that he buy uses. the the Instax printer. Yeah. and a phone for three hundred dollars. <laughs> well, this is for people who don't want to have phones because they're too hipster yeah. to have cell phones. No, they got rid of their cell phone before it was cool. They're back to using payphones on the street. But they call everyone collect because they have no money. Well, that's because no one uses change anymore. Well, that's why you have to call. That's why you have... No, no, hipsters have change. Yeah. They just don't want to use it because then they wouldn't have change. Hmm. So they call you collect. Well, if you're going to call somebody from a payphone, you may as well. <laughs> if they but, care enough to pick up the phone, they'll probably care enough to pay your phone probably. call. Probably. So anyway, the whole reason this came up is that it actually has a release date. It's been tentative, it's been quarters, it's been months, but it's never had an actual definitive release date. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to the Amazon page, January 1. Oh, good. It's like two years too late. <laughs> the new report shows that solid-state drives can take over a thousand years of data writing without going wrong. Um, yeah, this is awesome because I, I what, a couple months ago, swapped up to a solid-state drive. It's a very good upgrade for anyone with computers that they can actually upgrade themselves. Go for the solid state one. It's very worth it. Love it. Um, So they tested six drives. Yep. Uh, They met their match. Six of what? Four of them met their match before the one petabyte mark. But two of them continued writing two petabytes or more, which is 2,000 terabytes or more of data. Yeah. And that, that was writing like 10 gig files like they were swap files. So, and they did the math based on like normal computer usage. Like even writing yeah. swap files, and at two petabytes, that was like a thousand years, mm. and so one petabyte's five hundred years. Yeah, when they when the, the solid state was first the thing, the, the durability was still yeah lower. That was that was kind of one of the issues was the the uptime over ten years is lower than a solid or hard drive, but that's, that's no longer a thing. No, that's not a thing anymore. So Airbus, in an attempt to, I don't know get publicly relevant for something, made a very cool video of five Airbus A350, some of the biggest passenger jets on the, the sky today, yep. all together flying formation kind of like big, stupid fighter jets. Um, in a video that costs lots of millions of dollars, if it, you take its pieces all together, it's billion plus dollars, uh, they took five of these massive jets from around the world we're all kind of prototype jets, though, at this point, right? Uh, the A350-900 uh, just got approved to be used in flight. Like, it just got qualified. So they these are the prototypes they used to qualify it. Yep, so they took these five jets and with a squad of pilots and a squad of camera, pa- camera people and planning and lots of effort, they made a very cool video of doing a series of formations in passenger jumbo jets. Yes. Which is very, very cool. Um... The video, I feel like, could have been a little more intense for being a massively produced fighter jet, but giant jet video. Well, they weren't making the video. The video was a behind the scenes. They were trying to get um, shots for like brochures and, mm. and materials. So it was, it was a billion dollar photo shoot. 
Yeah. I, it's a very, very cool photo shoot. Uh, they, they said that the uh, behind the scenes video was really boring. It was for what of, the subject matter was. It was it was a little boring, but but just to give you an idea of the breakdown, each of these things costs three hundred thousand dollars. And there's five of them. So there's one point five billion dollars by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know how much they paid the pilots to Which fly. Is a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. But because there's like five pilots, each one of them. Yeah. And then there's two two chase planes. Yep. Um just in jet fuel. Each plane takes 3,500 gallons mm -hmm. an hour, and they were only up in the air for like two hours, so 7,000 gallons. Uh, at $3 a gallon is like $11,000 a plane, mm -hmm. so there's $50,000. Who knows what they paid the pilots, because they're all test pilots, so they make a ton of money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then whatever they had for... for set up and everything else and let's not even imagine what they paid to rent gear assuming that you had to rent some specialized gear to oh do yeah this. specialized planes so yeah um <clears throat> it looks really cool though it does look very cool. it looks really cool it's, see the behind the scenes video suffered from showing too much realism of what that actually was behind the scenes yep with just a bunch of test pilots going very monotone thoroughly through their pre pre-flight checks and stuff it, it showed pilots was, being pilots yeah. So, so right now, so we can all agree ahead of time, when we say out, we mean out. And that's like, that's like four seconds of the video that you'll never get back. Yep. It's like that's some guy talking about literally nothing. Like, it means nothing. To us. To anyone. It's just like, just so we don't have to say this in the air, out is out that way. Like, that made it into the behind the scenes video. But the photo shoot is very cool. Yes. Remember last week we talked about the 24 karat adorned Nikon DF that was only yeah, available in Japan? The pretty one. Uh, you can buy them in the US now. Yay. On eBay. Oh. As imports. Yeah. At $3,500. Worth it. For the kit and like 3300 for the body only. Worth it. No one. I do too, and I don't even like Nikon. It's a good camera. No, the DF is, is a nice camera. It's a camera. That's a camera. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, that's it, all I got. I, honestly, I just, if I was going to put money into a DF, I would almost consider buying the kit because it looks so cool. <laughs> it does. It looks so much cooler. If I only had random money. So, I don't know. I'm just following up on no, that no, for next week. Uh, before we get in, into the next one, which I want to rip apart, I got a box. Oh. I got a box. box. I got a box. What's in the box? What's in the box, man? That's used on the internet too much. All right. So, uh, this past week, Adorama had their, what do they call it, their green sale or whatever it was. It was basically their version of Cyber Week. And, uh, they, well, well, they're not sponsors. I wish they were. They'd be awesome to have the sponsors, but they do their own YouTube thing. Um, but, you know, if you guys are watching, you could send me on a plane to go meet up with Mark Wallace for a couple of days. I wouldn't complain. Um, in the Bahamas. Yeah. Well, no, he's in Ecuador right now. Yeah. I'd but rather anyway. meet him in the Bahamas. But they, as part of the sale, they had a, a big thing off of uh, uh, anything that was Flashpoint or Glow brand, which are the two house brands. Flashpoint or Glow brand? Hey, it's a nothing. Yeah, it's just lots they, of they, they even brand their air pockets. So, oh, oh, it's Glow brand. Glow, Glow brand. brand. So that's their that's their upscale Flashpoint brand. Yay! Uh, so I picked up feel upscale. This is much nicer than the Flashpoint stuff. Oh, it's probably much nicer. The word Glow is not very no, whatever. Um, so I have a what, sixteen by I thought it was one uh, one by four foot. Uh, sixteen inch by forty eight inch strip light that I was hoping would get here before the weekend so I could use it for a shoot on Sunday. But it did not. It did not. It got here today. So I'm sure this sounds great in the audio. Oh, yeah. You're, you're going to make my life hell to edit later. But anyway, I got, I'm got. i happy to have a, well, open have a it. strip light that I wanted for a while. Strip lights are good. Yeah. And it's like I got two studio strobes. I can use them. You really just pull holes in every single one of these. Yep. There's a cat. I'm going to bring him up here just to play with stuff. All right. 
So this this next one I put in here when I was looking at, at articles this week for us to talk about. <laughs> you, you're gonna want that by the time we're done with this one. I don't. I, I think this is a great idea. What the hell? You're you're, you're supposed to hate this. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to hate this because it's gonna take business away from you. Oh shit! They, poor. They, they ain't taking business away from me. So I will say that in the slangiest way I can say. It. Keep going. <laughs> So, wed picks. Wed picks. Wed picks. Not a terrible name. No, not a terrible name. Just got Wednesday picks. Yeah, if it was Wednesday picks, and it was only pictures you'll have taken like Wednesday, picks. I wouldn't have a problem with this. But wed picks, the number one photo and video app for your wedding, mm-hmm. just got four point two five million dollars in funding. You know what it does? Mm-hmm. It lets you. Have your friends and family do the most annoying possible thing they can, which is take their phones out and take pictures at your wedding, and then put them all together for you in an album so that you don't have to hire a photographer. Uh, it doesn't work that way, which is fine. But the people they advertise this at, that's the, those are the people that are thinking like that. I, it's So the way the market is... So, so Uncle Bob, with his iPad, can stand out in the aisle and take a picture of you. You either want... A photographer, <clears throat> like you, like I, like Matt Norris, like anybody who actually cares. Nobody's like Matt Norris. In the amount people care, people could be like each other. His yes. work is very unique, but the amount of effort you put into a wedding as a photographer, you can either hire someone who's worth the money that you pay them and will do things that people who aren't photographers will never be able to do, or you can have an option like this. I honestly think this is better for people who actually give a fuck about wedding photos, and I will say that as explicitly as possible, because there are far too many wedding photographers right now. There are far too many people who will show up to your wedding and take mediocre pictures for a couple hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, be there all day, work seemingly very hard, and do very mediocre work. I would rather your friends do it for you at that. If you're gonna pay six hundred dollars for a wedding photographer, have wed pics, have your friends take better pictures than they will, because they will. A crappy wedding photographer is not going to take better pictures than your friends of you having fun. Mm, that's true. Then paying a crappy wedding photographer who does, does nothing but make the field more difficult for someone who actually cares and takes, does good work and takes the time to do good work to actually make money for themselves. So See, you took a totally different angle on this than I expected. Well, so that's that's kind of Matt Norris's take on this. I, I bet you would say almost the exact same thing. Is that I would expect the, Matt the to people, say that. The people that... I expected you to shred this use, apart with me. No, I don't need to shred this apart because I actually, this is perfectly fine. I don't have no problem running a wedding, shooting a wedding that's already doing this because I'm going to do my job and I can work perfectly fine around people who are taking pictures with their cell phones. It's not going to bother me. Well, you're already doing that. So. That's, that's exactly the thing. Exactly. There's been enough weddings I've been at that are hashtag Pete and Janelle wedding 2014 <laughs> tag us in your photo. Like, this is perfectly fine. It's when you actually want a photographer, you can pay for it. Now have your fun. <laughs> I really just wanted to shred this. <clears throat> I can't. I just I, I appreciate the fact that it's a good app that made a bunch of money, which they deserve, rightfully. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. No, I. All right. Well, now that I'm feeling down, yeah. we should All right. talk yeah. about the crowdfunding project of the week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the Vela One. It is. The fastest strobe ever. It's very cool. So, these guys over in England, they, uh, because I had to translate all the prices, that's how I do they were in England. I thought you were going to say translate the articles, and that was pretty funny. (laughs) Their whole point is your flash is too slow. And what they mean is, no matter what you're doing, if you want to do high speed photography, you don't have a fast enough. Oh, it's a speed light? Holy crap. All right. It, it's cool. It's kind of like a speed light. I mean, it's meant to be like a speed light. Well, yeah, it runs on AA batteries. It's yeah, it runs light. on four AA batteries. This is insane. <clears throat> so it runs on the same batteries you would run your speed light on. It's it's a, it's a square. It's like this big, mm-hmm. like like six inches square, I think. I don't know. It's in centimeters. I can't read. I don't read centimeters. Um, but it fires off at one two millionth of a second at full power. 
that's enough to stop a bullet in flight. A normal uh, speed light fires off, so that's 50, 500 nanoseconds. A normal speed light at its best fires off at 50 microseconds, so 1 20,000th of a second. It's 100 times faster. And in that time, that same bullet could travel two to three inches and just be a blur. So they've managed to make a light that fires so fast, you can actually catch a bullet in flight. Hmm. And of course, studio strobes are even slower than that, but you're not using them for nearly the same thing. Well, I mean, now studio strobes are slower. And a lot of, like, the, the competitor to this is big studio blocks. Like yeah. The wrong color flash does yeah. some of the highest ones. But it's very interesting. I'm, I'm curious what the, the actual output is. It is. I'm sure it's next to nothing. What do you mean? As far as light? Yeah. No, it's ridiculously high. They, they did a ton of R&D to find the right LEDs. They use the, on, the, the onboard circuit <clears throat> LEDs, the same things they use to light buildings. Mm -hmm. And they have um, tested them. They found specific ones that work the way they want them to, with the right color, that they have pushed to like 2,000% of what they're supposed to do, but without damaging them, because they do such a short duration. It'd be interesting to see what the actual flash power is. Not that it matters a ton now, with higher ISO being much easier to achieve and all sort of thing. Well, you're not trying to shoot for a long distance. You're shooting a small, fast thing. Yeah, so you're looking for sensitivity. Yeah. That's, you have to be able to capture that light appropriately. Yeah, but it's still a ridiculous... <clears throat> it's, it's still <clears throat> more than your 9, 10 foot out. Like, they had a, a chart, and I didn't put the chart in here, that compares the lumens of studio, uh, tip one of the brown color studio strobes, the 910, and their flash, like the max duration, the max lumens, whether or not it'll explode, hmm. things like that. Um, and they have the air gap in there, too, in, in their list. Because uh, they have the, the one that says, might kill you, air gap, yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, but all the pictures they have up on the, on the site are insane. It's just like, you, you see the tomato that they've shot through before it's had the chance to collapse on itself because it's been shot hmm. with the bullet coming out the other side. The lowest, well, the absolute lowest level pledge, like anything on Kickstarter, is, you know, $1, in their case, one pound. Uh, you know, you backed us. Congratulations, you you get updates. Uh, but I think it's at 10 or 15 pounds. I didn't put it in here because I didn't think of it until I was looking at the picture. I was like, this isn't relevant. No, I think it is. Uh, they will, uh, it's, it's, sorry, it's 50 pounds. 10 pounds, they'll, take a picture, they'll send you a picture they've taken for someone else. But for 50 pounds, which is about 70 bucks right now on the exchange, they will buy an item up to 10 pounds in value and shoot it and capture the image for you. <laughs> That's funny. So I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, I, I might actually do That'd that. Be, that would be pretty cool. Because then you could pick up, you, you know, they, they, the, the rules were, had to be something they can get in the UK and... It had to be 10 pounds or less. So <laughs> I was like, I'm sure you can find a shitty CD and explode it. Hmm. But it sounds like a good Kickstarter. It does sound like a good Kickstarter. But here, here's the part that kills me. You, you know they're not advertising it to us because in order to get one, Velo 1, high speed LED flash, 550 pounds. Or, as we would think of it, eight hundred and sixty dollars to get one. Not that ridiculous. It's really not. It's, um, it's not that expensive, really. Nope. Two of them, five hundred, fifteen hundred and fifty dollars, and then they uh, they they connect. So you you know you've, they've got the quarter inch, so you can connect them together. For sixty one hundred dollars, you can get a three by three grid of them. Hmm. So you have nine of them. Hmm. Which you could do is to, well, you get nine, so you could do a four, a four, and then have one more, and you could light like do three point lighting at warp speed. Hmm. No, it's so, very cool. Yeah, I, I'd love to see what that turns into. Yeah. I'm sure it'll get backed like crazy and used. It was like ninety percent backed already, mm. although almost nobody has actually bought them. They've all bought the lower tier ones. Hmm. So I thought that was kind of interesting that. Um, Except for like the early adopter ones that were a hundred pounds less for the one than the two, uh, those were sold out. But um, yeah. 
I think only like one of the ones at the regular price was still there. And then everything else was like tons and tons sold at the lower levels. of like the picture or the, we'll blow something up for you. That, that's a pretty good Kickstarter. It's like once, once the Kickstarter gets hold, you'll have no, I mean, they'll be able to produce them like crazy. And oh, yeah. They'll be, they'll have their foothold. It's, yeah. it's very cool. $860 is not crazy. No. I mean, the 910 is almost $600. Like, that's yeah. a normal flash. Yeah. So, yeah. I that, that was the, the crowdfunding thing I found this week. That oh, that's I, a good one. Uh, if you've got the money, I say go get one. <clears throat> Buy us one. I don't know what the hell we do with it. that. Thing, yeah. <laughs> it's a smash grab of the hammer for you. <laughs> Oh, remember when I tried to make the cut up the pineapple and we were throwing pieces of pineapple around? We could use it for that. Yeah. We could do that again. Sure. Except I wouldn't do that in this studio now. Oh, without putting tarps. It wouldn't be a problem. Tarps everywhere. We would need at least Einstein's to do that at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but we would. Yeah. So that, that's, that's all point. I got in news. Uh, you doing anything this week? Nope. No? Nope. Nothing going on? No, nope. I'm going to Disney this weekend. Oh, yeah. So you won't be here next week. I'll be recording by myself again. I won't be here. I'll be here Tuesday. I'll be back Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll be a little late next week. I'll wait for Ryan to get back before we record again. Of course. Unless I get someone else to sit in for you. No objections. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever wants to sit in for you. So uh, I've tried. That's why I end up doing it by myself sometimes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So that sounds like a podcast. Yeah, that sounds like a podcast. Remember, if you like us, you should be subscribing. And we've got the blog, which I've been updating a lot recently. I've been keeping the blog up. Cool. At AperturChat.com. And we're on Facebook, although that's tougher to find because it's Bucket Castle Photo, which is the bigger all-encompassing thing for the channel. And, yeah, that's it for the week. Cool. Sounds good. We'll see you later.